quiet examinations today of this scene of deadly destruction yesterday that thankfully wasn't even worse. Uh, I think we're very fortunate that no other lives have been lost, no rescuers were, work, were, were injured, and we want to keep it that way. We want to make sure it takes whatever time using engineers and experts to ensure that we do this as safely as possible. Two of the five victims, brothers Patrick and Eric Stemmer, are being remembered online with GoFundMe sites set up to support their young families. Their family owns a construction company in the small community of Salmon Arm. Patrick Stemmer had just recently posted videos of the crane working on the Kelowna building. It's hard. It's really hard. These are people. Hard, lovely, hardworking people. And they, you know, lives have been lost doing their job. Neighbors say they had gotten to know some of those working on the site, even asking questions of the crane operators and how they did their job. He went up there and he inspected everything on the way up. Um, and sometimes if we were out in the front, you know, he might be see us beginning and have a little wave or something, you know. Those who witnessed the accident still find it hard to believe. The speed at which that sort of catastrophic event happened where the you know, the, the crane uh, broke away and fell as, as so fast that no one could have uh, really gotten out of its way. Engineers are trying to secure what is still standing to safely retrieve the fifth body and then begin what will be a lengthy investigation. Well, it's a tedious process. There's a set procedure. Those who investigate crane accidents say as they are being dismantled, there is a set system and that some of the cranes do collect data about conditions like wind. The crane will tell you what happened along with the statement. Get the statements from the people before they have an opportunity to talk to each other. A very sad situation. And Susie, what are the plans to retrieve the body of that fifth person? Well, Vancouver's heavy urban search and rescue team was requested for assistance, and I spoke with them just a short time ago. They do expect to be arriving in Kelowna any moment now. They say they will arrive on scene. They will then speak with the incident commander there, as well as the engineer on site, as well as with their engineer that they're bringing up, who's part of the team, to take a look at the conditions, what the risks may be for them to be able to go into that site. They say they expect to do some at least preparation work tonight to be able to go in and retrieve that body, but that may not happen until tomorrow. They have to get a better sense of what that situation is. Once that body is retrieved, then the city will begin looking at reopening some of those areas that still remain closed around the site. Anita. Okay, Susanna DeSilva reporting for us tonight on that crane collapse. Thank you, Susie.